From Pennsylvania Dutch country to the tip of Maine, the Northeast is chock full of iconic regional specialties. Some of my favorites include a really pretty red cranberry tart in a pat brise crust, mini chocolate whoopie pies, so delectable filled with a surprising ganache, and New York crumb cake, very delightful, more crumbs than cake, it's the best and glistening and beautiful walnut babka. You'll love the technique to make this and you'll love how delicious it tastes. Today on Martha Bakes. Long appreciated for their tangy taste and beautiful color, cranberries are delicious in both sweet and savory recipes. And today I thought I would use them in a delectable cranberry tart that's flavored with currant jelly and cognac. This is a well-made pat brise that has a lot of little pieces of butter still visible. You want a flaky crust for this tart. And we're using a 10 inch tart shell with a removable bottom. That's what you make quiches in, you make tarts in, and lightly flour and always have, when you're rolling out pot brise, a little um, natural bristle brush nearby so that you can take off the excess flour. Also, flour your pin. This is my first rolling pin that I got in Paris, and it is of a very, very heavy wood. I think it's mahogany, and it's my favorite of all rolling pins. Roll this out and keep turning the dough so it doesn't stick to the counter. And always put a little bit of flour underneath. You want it about an inch larger than the pan. Now to get this crust up off the counter, roll it on your rolling pin. Just like this. Like magic. And then unroll it. I want to have that overhang. So we want to have rigid sides. And you can do that by folding this excess right into the pan. This will make a nice reinforced crust all the way around. It's going to be holding a lot of cranberries. So there, that looks very good. And now the last thing to do is dock the bottom of the shell with the tines of a fork. Now, this docking prevents the crust from erupting while it's baking. You want to keep it as flat as possible. So wrap this up in plastic wrap and get this into your freezer. I have one all ready to um, put in the oven. This is a frozen crust, and we have to line it with parchment. You can struggle with the parchment. It keeps popping out. Here's a silly little trick. Just take the parchment and crinkle it up like that, and it makes it much more agreeable to staying down in the shell. See that? Staying down, it doesn't pop up. Now pour into the shell your pie weights. These are lentils that we've been using probably for 10 years. You can use lentils, you can use kidney beans, you can use metal weights that you buy. So now this goes right into the oven. After 20 minutes, remove the parchment with the weights and continue baking another 15 to 20 minutes. Now, the cranberry filling is very easy to make. You will need a couple sort of unusual pantry items, red currant jelly, hopefully homemade if you have it, and unflavored gelatin. Two packages softened in about a half a cup of cold water. Now, this gelatin is odorless, it's tasteless, it's colorless, and it is a thickening agent. Now, we have um, six cups of fresh cranberries. So six cups, and you can tell if cranberries are fresh if they bounce. So always bounce them. If they don't bounce, they're not fresh. And the one cup of currant jelly goes right into the cranberries. And because they're so, so, so tart, I suggest using about a cup and three quarters of granulated sugar and the softened gelatin. And we're going to heat this up until all the sugar is dissolved. And for adults, if this is going to be an adult tart, I suggest uh, using two tablespoons or so of a very nice cognac. It just enhances the flavor. So cook for about 12 minutes. So now look at this. 
it's cool, the contents, and uh, a nice consistency. This will set up nicely in an hour or so. Now your crust is cooled, so pour your cranberries right into the shell. Chill this for at least an hour, and I really suggest making this the day before and serving it the next day. So after an hour, look, totally solidified. Release the ring from the tart itself. Look how pretty that looks. And it is ready to serve. And I'll just take a small piece to start. Doesn't that look utterly delicious? Served with freshly whipped cream, you have a superb dessert for any time. A lovely dessert from the Northeast to all of you everywhere else. This recipe is for whoopie pies. Did the whoopie pie originate in New England or Pennsylvania? Well, they both claim it as their own, but the state of Maine recently stepped in to declare it as their official state treat since they are the nation's largest producer at the present time. There are countless variations, but I like the mini chocolate whoopie pies that we're gonna show you how to make today filled with ganache. You'll need to sift one and three quarters cups of all-purpose flour with three quarters of a cup of Dutch process cocoa. Also add to this mix uh, half a teaspoon of salt and one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. And I am sifting rather than whisking because cocoa often has a lot of lumps in it. There, good. Now, this is all sifted, ready to go. And we put a little bit of butter in just to give it a little bit of a buttery flavor. So it's only one tablespoon of butter in your mixer with a quarter of a cup of shortening. And this can be your favorite, whatever it is, but it's solid shortening, not oil. And cream the butter and uh, shortening with a half a cup of dark brown sugar and a half a cup of granulated sugar. Using shortening, gives you a lighter and higher cake, but the crumb is a little bit uh, coarser and more crumbly than a pure butter batter. Okay, so now you can add one egg. So get this nice and creamy and fluffy, and one teaspoon of vanilla. And then alternating with one cup of whole milk, your dry ingredients. You can turn the beater down a little bit to add. This is a nice, dark, chocolatey cake batter. And it really is a cake batter that you're going to be forming into cookie discs. And end with the rest of the milk. The batter looks really good. Have ready parchment-lined baking sheets. And this will make enough batter for about two baking sheets. So now I have two different scoops. This recipe makes 42 small whoopie pies. These are two teaspoon scoops and we can make a tray of those. Make sure you measure them out evenly. So this two teaspoon size scoop makes 42 sandwiches and the two tablespoon scoop makes 16, so depending on who is going to be eating these, you'll decide what size you'll make. So that's the smaller size, and these will go into a 375 degree oven, and you bake them until the cookies spring back when touched with your finger. And this will take anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes for the small ones and 12 to 14 for the larger ones. Now this is the larger cookie. So there, get these right into the oven and continue making your cookies. So now I'm making the ganache filling, eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. And we have one cup of heavy cream that's been scalded. Scalding means bringing it to a boil, turning it off. Just make sure all the chocolate is covered with the cream and just let it sit there until the chocolate softens. If you stir, the ganache will cool too quickly, making it grainy. So let that chocolate soften 
add to this an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And now it's very soft. And you will see how silky and dark the mixture becomes. So here's our cooled ganache to be. You can use a flat beater for this. This is gonna take about two to four minutes to get nice and thick and creamy. And it does get a little bit lighter in color. We have one that's already beaten. This is what it looks like, just like chocolate buttercream. Looks very good, don't you think? These are great for a birthday party, great for a treat at a picnic. And for the little ones, I have a vanilla buttercream. And you can just do the same thing. Great recipe, simple to make. Young and old will love this Northeastern treat. Sunday mornings at my house when I was growing up always included a piece of crumb cake. Mom made a really good one. But it wasn't until I met Sarah Foster that I met a really great crumb cake. And this is her recipe. It's a rich dough topped with large buttery crumbs introduced in New York by immigrant German bakers. It's easy to make the batter. Start with one egg. And this is a no mixer batter and cake. You don't have to have a mixer to do this. So you can just make it in a couple of bowls. One egg, a half a cup of milk, and uh, two teaspoons of vanilla. Whisk that together. And to this, add two tablespoons of canola oil. And now sift your dry ingredients. You need one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, half a cup of granulated sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, and two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Whisk the dry ingredients together. When you're baking cakes and cookies, have your ingredients at room temperature. If you're making a pot brise or a pie crust, it's make it cold, bake it hot. So you'll want your ingredients to be cold because you're cutting butter into the flour. But this, you want to incorporate, mix things all together. So it's kind of important to have everything at room temperature. And you can just start stirring the dry ingredients into the wet. It's a nice wet batter. And I'm just using a rubber scraper for this part of the process. And now spread that into your baking sheet. We call it a quarter sheet. It's really a half of a size of a regular cookie sheet. I've lined it with parchment, one piece going this way and one piece going crosswise, and oiled with uh, canola oil and a brush. Then just sprinkle with flour. It's all prepared, ready to take the batter. Really place the batter in the bottom of the tray and spread your cake in an even layer if you can. And notice that I'm holding the parchment in place with binder clips. They are very useful. They do not belong just in the office. And now for the crumb topping. At this point, preheat your oven to 325 degrees. The whole cake bakes in about 20 minutes. Quite fantastic. So the crumbs themselves, two and a half cups of flour, one cup of light brown sugar. If you keep the sugar in a container like this, the top is tight fitting, it will never get hard. Okay, this gets mixed in. Just incorporate the flour with the sugar. And now, cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. Stir that in. And what makes the crumbs is the butter. And don't be shocked, but two sticks, a half a pound of melted butter. And cooled. So stir that all in. I know in our family, it was the crumbs that everybody loved. So now, just spread these in big lumpy amounts all over the top of the cake. I'm squeezing while I'm dropping. 
So making a real rough landscape of crumbs. Now you can also use this recipe very nicely for coffee cake cupcakes. So there you have it. Bake 325 for 20 minutes, turning the tray at least once during baking. So here's the crumb cake, it's cooled. Remove the clips and it releases very nicely. And then dust with powdered sugar in a fine sieve. You don't want a whole lot of sugar, but it looks pretty with the sugar and it is traditional Northeast style. Okay, now, how big a piece? Hmm. I think we'll cut it in half first. Using a serrated knife it makes it very easy to cut. And then in half again, and then in thirds just like at the deli. And you can serve individual pieces on a plate or arrange it on a serving platter for the breakfast table. You can eat this crumb cake with a fork. You can pick it up with your fingers, but make it once and I guarantee you, you'll never buy store-bought again. Papu comes in all kinds of sizes and shapes. They're named after grandmas or babas who traditionally bake them. And babka is particularly popular right here in the Northeast due to the large numbers of immigrants who settled here from Eastern Europe, where babka actually originated. My guest today is Uri Sheft from Bread's Bakery. Uri, you're going to share a very delicious version of babka. How do we make it? We need Two large eggs. Okay, I can do that for you. Yeah, and I'll meantime take the flour. This is so we're measuring. This is all measuring. done by measuring, and mm -hmm. it's uh, what 650 Six. grams of flour. Right. So what I like to do before we start, I like to sift the flour because that's a way we're gonna get another 10 to 15 percent more. Okay. Okay. So I start with the milk, size of all, then. The fresh yeast. Ah, so three quarters of a cup of milk. Milk. One ounce. One ounce of uh, fresh yeast. Fresh yeast. Take the flour. Take the flour. Okay. So easy to just lift it up in the paper. The whole thing. The whole thing. Eggs. Half a cup and one tablespoon of granulated sugar and a teaspoon of salt. The butter. So okay. room temperature, very soft. Very soft. Yes. So. One stick plus two tablespoons of very soft butter, unsalted, and vanilla. Don't forget the vanilla. No. <laughs> Which is like, what, a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon? Yeah. Oh, just a hardly bit. any. Yeah. Oh, OK. Then we're going to start to mix it in a very slow speed so we don't have the flour all over us. So easy, just everything easy. together, huh? Everything ah, together. Very nice. Now, one thing, when I started, though, I never do anything else. I don't go now. Answering the phone, don't let anybody disturb <laughs> me. Like, you sound like me. I always say, do not go and answer the door. Nothing. That's I right. I want to get very intimate with my dough. OK. Uh, and what do you think? It's been assembled yeah. very nice together. After all the ingredients are assembled together, you can go a little bit higher on the speed. If we look at the dough, slowly, slowly, we see everything is assembled, get shiny. The mixer is going to have a little bit harder time because the dough is going to get a little bit more uh, elastic. I see. I think now the dough is almost ready. Yeah, it's fantastic. Very easy dough. Very easy dough. You actually, even don't need to even a tool to take it out. Right. Do you want a little flour? So, yeah. Just a little. Yeah, this is nice. And now I'm going to knead it with my hand. So I have. This is what I call my mom's way, just working with my hand plumb, squeezing it to the table. Right. So now I like because after we're going to roll it out, and I, I want a rectangular, so I kind of like to give it Oh, I see. a shape that will be easy to roll it out later. So we're going to come a little bit of flour here. Good, and it has to rise for how long? Now so it's, it's rise for one hour in room temperature and then another hour in a refrigerator. Oh. But we can also stretch it out the refrigerator time even up to eight hours. So we can actually make the dough the Last day night. before yeah. uh, in the <laughs> evening and then in the morning finish it up. So I'm just making the cinnamon sugar with half a cup of sugar mixed with a teaspoon of 
cinnamon. Right. Ori is going to now roll the dough. Just sprinkle a little bit of flour. I'll take all the gas out. So I really want to get it re rectangular, so I kind of the edge before I start to work with a rolling pin. Then start to roll it out. Boy, it's beautiful dough. Let's so roll it out to approximately 10 inches by 28 inches for this yeah. particular babka. Now this makes how many babkas? This makes three babkas. Oh, wow. OK. Now we're going to smirch the butter. OK. So, so I like to use this um, scraper. So again, the butter really has to be very uh, room temperature to yeah. spread yeah. like this. Now we can spread. It is all over. So these are currants, mm -hmm. so tasty. And okay. walnut. So one and a half cups of walnuts. Walnut. Yeah, Very can... nice. OK. Now, in order to make sure everything stays, we can just a little bit help it. So neat. This is very nice. I want to roll it, but I want to roll it very tight. So a little bit patient, because it's going to roll in and then going to Go a little bit back, and then you can help me. Oh, it's just going a little piece at a time. Gets easier and, as you go. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. And now. Gonna cut the small one, and then. Oh, I see. Ah. So the idea is crisscross them, and then we twist them. Oh, pretty. Oh, yeah. and the openness is so beautiful. And the opening is going to be. So twisted. OK, I'm going to do this one. OK, so you want to have the same side. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, and then in the mold. Now these, Ori tells me, you might find things like this online, <laughs> or you can use a tin. Now we're going to let it sit and proof for about one hour. So you want to see what happened? Ah, mm. They're so beautiful. They are. So these go in a, what, 350 oven? 350 oven. That's... A convection oven, because those it helps them rise even more, right? Right. And for how long? This is for half an hour, maybe sometimes it needs to be turned in okay. the middle of the baking, maybe another so five minutes, 30, 35 minutes. And while they're baking, um, make a sugar syrup, which is like a glaze for the finished babka. So the sugar syrup is 2 thirds of a cup of water. And half a cup of sugar. OK. Very easy. Very and so that's easy. just going to be like a shiny glaze on top. Right. After the babka coming out of the oven, going to really make its moisture. So the sugar's all dissolved. And while it's hot, you brush it. Brush it, yeah. Okay. So give it a good layer of sugar syrup. So pretty. And it does soak in, doesn't it? It is, yeah. And that's why we do it when it's hot. What a fantastic gift mm -hmm. for people to make. It is. Wow, wow. and it's swirled just perfectly. Cake and nuts and currants. So thank you very much, Uri, for sharing this delectable babka recipe. I cannot wait to try it on my friends. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the next episode of Martha Bakes. <laughs> Combine a half a cup of maple syrup, a quarter cup dark brown sugar, a pinch of salt, and one half cup heavy cream in a skillet. Cook, stirring until sugar dissolves and is thick enough to coat the back of a wooden spoon. Remove from heat and add one teaspoon of vanilla, a half a cup chopped pecans, and one tablespoon of butter. Serve, pour it over your favorite ice cream.